Okay guys, so welcome back down to Carbon Car Systems. We haven't done a video in a while, but today we're gonna to show you how to replace this. This is a stereo in the Toyota FJ Cruiser. Now these are the same, I think, all around the world. They're a great unit to replace with this, and this is what we're gonna be using. We use a lot of Kenwood units because we find they're very good value for money. These is the, or this is the Kenwood DDX 919 WS, which is a widescreen specific Toyota unit with these rounded edges and it is 200 millimeters wide and it fits perfectly in these Toyota dashes. In fact, it was designed for these Toyotas and the new Subarus. Now this one here has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It does have wireless Apple CarPlay this year. Wireless Android Auto is not out yet in Australia, but we presume it'll be out soon. That's got to do with the phones in Australia and Google not releasing it yet. But we're also gonna show you how to wire it, plug and play uh, with these steering wheel controls. We're gonna show you how to adapt those into it. Now these have the reverse camera up in the top screen. We're gonna leave that there for the sake of this video. You could custom wire that into the new units that we're gonna put in, because um, it does take three video camera inputs. So you could run a front, rear, dash camera, whatever you want into this unit as well, as long as it's got a traditional RCA signal wire input. All right, so first up, to do these, it is very, very easy. We're gonna show you straight up under here, is a screw okay on the left hand side or the passenger side is a screw here and on the right hand side of the driver side there is a screw here you're going to undo them they're just a traditional phillips head screw and then you can pull on these from the bottom and you're just going to pull them forward so i'm using one hand here so you can see it's a little bit stiff but very easy to remove as well so you can see there pulled it out that's the passenger side one and we're going to try and do the driver side one we've already undone the screws for the sake of the video but um, they're quite easy to pull out it's much much easier to do and support this with two hands if you're doing it with two hands but i don't have someone here to film today so i'm trying to do it with one hand um, very easy to do now behind here would typically be a screw and a screw either side very simple um, we do have plastic non-mounting pry bars if you want to pull these off a lot easier but you just grab it from the bottom and it lifts off and pulls forward as well it's just held in by clips once you actually pull this forward just be careful not to mark any of your dash you're going to have these three plugs to undo you just push the little locking tab on the top of each one and they will pop out so i'll quickly try and show you that if i can do it with one hand i might not be able to by holding it. i don't want to scratch the dash so i'm going to put it down and quickly undo those so there you have it guys once you undo that you'll end up with those three plugs undone be aware, always eject the CD. If you have any CDs, make sure it's not in there before you power this unit down. Um, now, on the passenger side again, you're gonna have two bolts on either side and on the driver's side, you can see them here, they're 10 millimeter bolts. So you're gonna use a 10 mil socket to undo those on either side. And they're very, very easy to undo. Obviously a socket set, 10 millimeter, just undo it. Um, Any clockwise as always is to undo them. Clockwise is to do them up. So very easy to undo those. We'll quickly pull them out. Button on that guys, you can pull the units forward. Very simple and easy to do. So here it is here. Ah, sorry, I'm just trying to do this without scratching anything with one hand. You're gonna get a lot of plugs on the rear and I'm gonna undo them and I'm gonna show you what each of those plugs is and what you're gonna retain. Um, and it's gonna be quite simple to do. Okay, won't be a moment guys. Again, all these, they just have these little locking tabs. So that little top bit on the green one, little top bit on the white one, you just push them down and pull them out and they come out very, very easily. There it is with all the plugs out of the vehicle. And I'm gonna show you what you get in the Kenwood box because you will need a few additional parts. And we're gonna make these available on our website. Um, we also do full kits for the FJ Cruiser which have all these parts already included pre-wired so you can just plug and play this and make it really easy to install yourself. Um, look, we're gonna adapt this factory USB. We're not gonna adapt the factory AUX because it needs a cut and shut and no one actually provides a plug and play adapter for that. Um, but the new units have a wireless uh, music via Bluetooth. You're gonna have wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto through that USB. So we're gonna use the USB for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay for charging and wired, wired type setups, okay? We're gonna adapt that for you. But if you open these units, okay, they're gonna come with a few things. So for you guys to just order these directly, um, check out our website, Carbon Car Systems. We do have them available. Um, you might need a couple of extra parts. I'm gonna show you what you're gonna need now. In the box you're going to get this, this is a GPS receiver, so that's for improving the accuracy of the Apple CarPlay Android Auto, so you will need it. These units do not have GPS built in because it uses Apple CarPlay Android Auto to do the navigation, okay? So this here is dual USBs in here, so these are USB extensions because this unit does have dual USB. Mm. 
and we are going to show you how to adapt those uh, to the new unit. So you're going to have one spare one in the glove box and we're going to adapt that factory one in that little port down in the center console so it's got easy access for you guys. So this is how they come. Dual USBs, you've got one grey, one black. They're just little extensions. Um, so we're going to keep them up on the dash. You do get an external microphone. We're going to quickly show you how to run that external microphone. You will need to use it. It does differ from the factory microphone. Um, you also have a remote control if you want to run that. Um, some screws, some batteries for the unit and your main power harness and a steering wheel control harness. Now, we're going to show you how to modify this if you guys are at home doing it yourself. Um, but this is the harness that comes with it and it is very simple plugs into the Kenwood unit there Okay, and then you've got your turbo plugs on this end But you also have this pink wire which is your VSS or vehicle speed sense wire You also have the light green wire which is your handbrake wire so that you can use the DVD while driving and features while driving And the purple wire which is your reverse trigger now We're going to show you how to wire all those three now if you were buying the kit from us We do pre-wire all this so you don't have to do any of this, but we're going to show you anyway um now, this is really cool that comes with this unit. It is a 28 pin Toyota steering wheel control adapter so that you don't need to buy any other interfaces. So other interfaces in Australia are about 80 to $120. This is actually included and you can program them if you have analog steering wheel controls and most of the Toyotas do. So this very, or this FJ Cruiser does have analog steering wheel controls. We're gonna show you how to adapt that. I'm gonna modify this as well to do the reverse trigger and the vehicle speed sense wire so you don't need to do anything else we're going to do it all behind the dash here very simply now i'm going to do that for you in just a sec but first up we are going to modify the factory stereo and we're going to put the brackets on our new one so here is the old one okay we're going to quickly adapt these brackets over to the new unit it is very very simple because the new unit has the exact same screw holes and it's going to line up perfectly and i'm going to show you that i'm just going to get this out of the box and i'll line it up for you Okay guys, so there's the new Kenwood unit alongside the old one. As you can see, the new one looks very, very sleek. Now, all you got to do is line them up, top and bottom, and you'll see the screw holes. Those screw holes there will line up with these ones, so top and bottom. Very easy to do. Just draw a line straight down, undo those, and move them down to that one. And that is as simple as doing the brackets on this vehicle. I'm just going to quickly undo them and slide it down to there, and I'll show you quickly. But I've got to put this down and use my drill. But that is also an 8mm socket. So if you don't strip it with the screw, screwdriver or the drill, use an 8mm socket, it will also do the same job. These screws will directly fit into here. If you do drop them and lose them, Kenwood does come some with some in the box as well. Guys, there you go. You can see I've moved it down. Same screws. We're trying to do this through a camera. It's a little bit harder. Uh, we'll go into the same locations very, very simply and put in the exact same four screws. This is literally one of the easiest upgrades you can ever do to your FJ, and it's gonna give you all that new phone connectivity when your old Bluetooth really is bad on those Toyota units. This is really gonna improve it. Plus you get all those navigation and app features that are future-proof and free to use. You can use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze navigation, and any other future apps that uh, Apple and Google will come out with, depending on the phone that you're using. Okay, like I said, um, don't thread these, just do them up nice and tightly, but don't overdo them. Very hard to do. I'm actually using my left hand here, but uh, right-handed. But we'll get it done. All right, so there you go. That's one side. We're going to do the other side quickly, off camera, and then I'm going to show you how to do the wiring. All right, guys, so there's the new one. Brackets mounted, left and right, ready to go in. Now we're going to show you all these plugs. First up, guys, we're going to run the external microphone. So this is the external mic, and we're going to mount it up here behind the rear vision mirror away from the windows we're gonna run it across the hood lining here these actually just pull down a little bit so there's plenty of room to be able to mount it behind there without it falling down and we're gonna run it through down the passenger a pillar um, you just pull these rubbers off very simple and easy to do actually designed to come off and you can run down the side there underneath the glove box and up into the center console now we're gonna do that first because it's just a peripheral uh, makes life a little bit easy you can just pull these forward and run it through across the top of these or you can pop off this SRS airbag section here a little screw um, or a little pick will do that just put that in there and there is actually a screw behind there um, I'll see if I can try and do it left-handed here so we just put this little pick in here and that pries forward very easy to do careful not to scratch anything 
and that there is a 10 mil bolt. It's a bit hard to see because of this sun glare. Apologize. Early morning here in Australia. It is a. Oh, it actually looks like a 12 mil bolt, so I do apologize. That's 12 millimeters. You can't undo that as well. I think it's going to be very easy for most of you people out there to be able to run that directly. So let me undo this quickly and we'll try and run it. And I'll show you how we're going to mount it. All right, we're going to mount it like that, guys. It comes with a little hook. You can just hook it into the hood lining so you can see it there. And I'm going to run it across the side here. The easiest way is just to loop it over the top here and run it across the top just like that okay now we do sell non-mowing pry bars that help with this and you can just basically slide it along there um, and that'll make your life easier hook it over the back edge of the plastic and into the roof lining i'm going to quickly do you do that uh, well, i need two hands to do it just to make my life easier but that's where it's going to run and as you do this you can just pull this taunt and it'll pull it up and don't worry about the airbag if the airbag um, goes off in an accident he's going to blow and break that cable anyway it's not going to make any difference so you'll be fine um now so yeah i'm just going to pull that lining down and put it up there and make life a little bit easier guys so there you go you can't see any of the cable it's going to mount up there nice and neat it's run across here it's run across that corner down here loop down here you can push this rubber back on nice and neat and it's going to hold it all in place very simple it's got a pinch weld it's designed to come on and off as you come down and look at that, very factory looking. You can see there's the cable there. It's actually come out under the glove box now. We're gonna tie it up under the glove box and then we're gonna pass it up into the center console here just to make our lives easier. All right guys, so as you can see, there's the microphone. Now we tied that all up underneath the glove box using a couple of cable ties. Now, when it comes through here, you're just going to tie it up. We put a little bit of tape around it, around some of these other cables to keep it in place. But I'm going to quickly run you through what all these plugs are. Now, it looks like a bit of a mess, but it's actually because they've got all these extra additions on these cars, um, you know, like the reverse mir mirrors and stuff. So they put all these T harnesses in it, but we'll keep it very simple. So those bottom three were off. Uh, so those bottom three there were off the factory plugs. You can see them there. And now I'm going to run through what you have here to simplify it, make it easy for you. This is the factory USB, this little grey port, okay? Um, we're gonna have an adapter for that. I might even show you that straight away because it's very, very simple. Here it is here. Actually, I'll, I'll get a, another person to help me film this and I'll show you how that's done in a minute, but I'll show you. That's the factory USB port there. Now, you also have this 28 pin plug. So I'll try and zoom in neater on this. Get a bit of out of the glare there. Okay, that's a 28 pin plug. So this is actually where your steering wheel controls are your reverse signal and your VSS wire. This is a little T-piece. This has all got white harnesses here, but if you follow it back, um, you'll see the main T-piece on the car here. And that is actually your steering wheel control. So these three are your steering wheel controls. And the little uh, green one here is your reverse trigger. And the purple white wire is your VSS wire. So be careful on this because on the Kenwood Loom, the purple white is reverse, but on here it's VSS on the actual car, okay? If you follow that back further, they've even T-pieced it off some of these other plugs, but disregard all those. Um, look, we also have these, these are the main power plugs. So here is the main speaker harness and power harness, and here is the rear speaker harness, which is this one. So they're the two plugs there. Um, you've got these other ones here on the car for additional things that, uh, options on the radio. Uh, we're not gonna be using those, you won't actually need them today as well. And you do have this last one, uh, this little square one. There, that's the uh, antenna adapter for the Toyota as well. Okay, so we're gonna show you how to wire that up. So, oh, I forgot to mention guys, there is this little green wire, that's the factory GPS antenna. So you can actually see it there. It runs up back behind the dash. It could run, oh, excuse this light, it makes it very hard to see. It goes up there behind the dash. Now, it could be different locations in the vehicle depending on who ran or mounted this stereo when it came in the country. Um, we're not going to be using that because it is a different antenna to the new GPS antenna. So this is the new GPS antenna. You do have to install it. Um, very, very simple. You can pull that old one out if you're going to sell the old radio. Um, this new one here, you just take off this double-sided tape and it's just got to mount up under the dash in a location that has no metal above it and has clear view to the sky. So. Um, you got these vents here and above those vents is a plastic loom that goes back or a plastic uh, funnel and I'm going to mount it just up here out of the way of these gauges so that's got a clear line of sight but you simply take that stick your hand up under and it'll mount up there very easily but guys that's the new GPS antenna it is actually mounted up there like I said you can see going up above that gauge now the next step is we're going to run these two peripheral USBs 
Now, you have a grey one and a black one. Be aware that on the Kenwood units, the black do Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Grey only does uh, Android Auto, okay? So you want to make the black one go to the factory USB location for here. We're going to adapt that. And the grey one, you're going to mount into your glove box. So we're just going to run it from behind the glove box up into the center console to plug into the Kenwood unit. And that's going to be spare for any charging or any external USB devices that you want to use, whether it be charging your phone or a second phone or a USB device. I'll show you here, guys, is how to pull this glove box out. It's actually really easy. On the, on the left-hand side, you've got this, this little lever. This is what um, allows it to uh, come down slowly. So you just clip it off on the side. You just pull up on the left and right side. It should virtually pop up. There you go. Okay, and uh, that'll actually come out. And that'll give you plenty of room there to actually run your cable up with your hands very simply. The next step done. So we have one USB, one GPS receiver, one microphone adapter. So there's three of the cables. The next step is we're gonna do this, the factory USB adapter. So this is very, very simple. Um, we sell these online uh, and we do provide them in the kit. Give me a second, I'll just find it. Here it is, a little USB adapter, okay? And all this does is use the factory plug into this and converts it into USB that goes into the Kenwood. So we're gonna take that gray port. It'll only go in one way on these units. Okay, so you got a little locking tab on the top of it. And I think if we're good enough here, we'll do it with one hand. There we go. Plugs in, adapts like that. And that's now adapting the factory USB into the Kenwood unit and that'll plug into the black port to retain that, okay? So these, uh, we do sell them online. I think they're about $20, not very expensive. Uh, we do include them in our kit, like I said, for the FJ, it's already included. Now, onto the uh, trickier part, which is basically the speaker adapters and a couple of the wires that we showed you earlier um, that we're gonna show you how to modify this harness and the 28 pin. So this is a 28 pin steering wheel control adapter. And we're gonna show you how to modify that. now. This is already built for the steering wheel controls. So it's already included in the units. Um, very simple and easy to do. We are going to adapt it for you. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to make that do the reverse, if you want the reverse signal on there, and also the VSS. So uh, we're gonna quickly modify that. All right, as you can see here, this is a 28 pin adapter. Steering wheel controls, very simple and easy to do. We're gonna unplug this and show you just for reference to make life easy. We will put that TP harness back in and we are gonna to adapt to the end of all that because it's a pass-through TP, so we're just not gonna eliminate anything from the car. But if you don't have that, you should have this. And as you can see here, this will plug directly in. Okay, very simple and easy to do. And what you're gonna see here is these bottom three are the steering wheel control adapters, one, two, three. If you look on the corresponding opposite side, you'll see one, two, three. That's already done. Now the ones we're gonna do, we're gonna pin in these two on my left-hand side of the video, which is the green is the reverse signal, and you've also got the purple white, which is the VSS wire. So you can actually see it's the top pin, one in is the reverse, and then directly on the bottom side, um, directly diagonal would be the VSS. So I can see here, so top side. So if I'm looking at it, one, two, second one in is the reverse, and the diagonal down, the third one in from the bottom line is gonna be the VSS. Now, all you gotta do is pop open these little tabs and we grab a spare one. We have a spare one of these. We're gonna make them available on our website so you can actually get those plugs if you wanna buy those plugs from us. But like I said, we do all this hard work for you. But we're gonna show you for those guys out there that haven't bought from us because sometimes people do buy it elsewhere um, and this will make your life easier. So we're gonna get a spare one of these. So we've got it here. Okay. And we're gonna de-pin this one. We're gonna use it in that one as well for those extra two wires because it's the same plug. It makes life a little bit easier. Um, so all we're gonna do is take our little pick here and we're gonna pop this up. Now I'm gonna show you off video because I need a second hand to do that. We're gonna just pop it up a little bit and then pin it out. I'm gonna show you. All right, so that's how much it will pop up. Just that little bit. You can see it there, just a little bit. That's the factory one. And that's the little popping up. It only pops up a fraction and that will allow you to de-pin it. And all I did was use something that sharp like this to just pick it, this is a little pick. I didn't use anything to do that. And just, it just locks in there and pops it up, okay? And you do it on both left and right. Then once you've done that, you should be able to just pull these cables out and uh, it'll, it'll be a little bit tight. Um, very hard to do things one-handed. Uh, let's see if we can get this out. There we go. It'll pull out like that. That allows you to pin into the other one. So, 
on the one that you're going to use in the car you're going to actually pop up the section hang on i've just dropped it i'll pick it up hang on i'll do pin these and i'll pick up the other one and i'll show you okay guys so there's my pins there's my old one or the one i'm going to use in the car i'll pop that up ready to go in what i'm going to do is actually cut these wires so i can use them I'm just going to cut them off that way I have some pins. Now, all you gotta do here is make sure you remember what colors you use for what or what are the pin location you're gonna pin in. And you take these and they slide in. Now, they only go in one direction and you either top or bottom, so either this way or this way. And you just gotta look at the old ones um, and you'll see on the pin locations how they go in and you'll see the pins come out the other side like that. So, um, I'm gonna slide that in. So, it'll just slide in like this. So, again, it's very, very hard to do things one-handed. But I hope this makes your life easier. So, it'll pin in like that. And we're going to push that all the way through. If it's not all the way through, you'll see it on the other side. It wouldn't have come through. So, it hasn't come through in that top corner there. You can actually just see it peaking, uh, but not all the way through. So, I'm going to push that in real hard. You've got to make sure that that top section is open in order to push them through correctly, okay? If you've done it correctly... It'll look like that. Oh, excuse this light, it's terrible. Um, there you go, guys. It'll look like that. You have the two pins in, and if you flip it around and you look at this side, you'll see the two pins are actually sitting out there in the correct location. So one in on the top and two in on the bottom. And then once you've done that, you're going to push the top shut. So you're going to push this down, and you're going to lock it in place. You should hear a little click and a little snap um, if it's in place properly. If it's not, you just jiggle your cables a little bit and move them back and forth and push that down at the same time. So use two hands to do that as well. And you'll see it lock into place and that will lock them into that section for you. There you have it guys. Then you're gonna try that in the plug. You can see it all lines up. So the green one, so top left, I've adapted that to different colors there, but just be aware of pin locations. So your top left one there will be reverse trigger. And then I'll have my VSS wire. Now I can see all that's gonna work. So I unplug that. I'm gonna plug that T piece back in. If you had that T piece, um, and just to make sure you're not removing anything from the vehicle But I will also show you how to adapt this now. This is the little plug I'm going to show you everything you need to wire on that to make it work Here we go guys. So that's my modified 28 pin plug that's going to do all my steering controls And this is the Kenwood loom that comes in the box now you can ignore cam plus cam minus that's for a specific um, Kenwood camera that allows you to adjust uh, their 360 degree view or their 180 degree view cameras and see different angles so that just sends signals but you can just ignore those two the main ones we're going to do is these three long ones we're going to show you how to adapt them now straight up the steering wheel can, uh, sorry the handbrake wire which is light green wire you can actually just cut that off and wire it straight to that black one and that will earth it out so they can use all the features of the unit anytime while driving and watch dvds while driving as well so cut that light green off and adapt it to that black and like i said if you buy from us we've done all this hard work but we're going to show you guys anyway um reverse trigger okay that's that purple white one that is going to go to that top pin on the uh, second one in on the 28 pin plug so we're going to cut that and adapt that okay so it's going to adapt right there we're going to wire those two together and then the bottom one that little light green one that we've done yours might be a different color um, is going to go to this pink one and I'm going to show you I'll quickly cut and solder those and I'll show you guys you can see here I've adapted and I've wired that into the metal um, I've stripped back the sheathing and you can see I'm going to earth that out here's my little adapter I'm going to solder those together um, doesn't matter at the moment because we're not plugged in any power so it doesn't matter if they're going to touch now the last thing you're going to need is this this is the little antenna adapter this is the aftermarket Toyota antenna adapter we sell these online um, they're about 10 15 bucks something like that um this is very simple you got to wire this in as well uh the blue wire simply goes to the blue wire on here not the blue white to the blue wire so we're going to quickly adapt that as well guys you can actually see my little adapter there for the antenna steering controls vss wire reverse signal if i'm going to run the camera to that factory screen or any aftermarket camera and the earth wire done all soldered nice and neat now i'm going to tape that up into a loom and i'm going to show you what it would look like if you order from us because we pre-do all this for you guys there it is so we tape it up with factory cloth tape which is called tessa tape we do that make that available on our website for you guys and that's how it's going to look now this is as easy as plugging it all in to the relevant plugs and they really only go in one way so here's the antenna adapter plugged in here's your main powers 
plugged in again oh, this one-handed thing is ridiculous i'll make sure next time we're filming uh, we organize stuff and this is a last minute filming for you guys we thought we'd show you this as we were doing this install today um here's your back speakers plugged in clicks in and the 28 pin plug that's going to click in as well and you already saw us do the USBs that we supplied for you. There you go. All done. And that's ready to go into the Kenwood unit. So that's the main Kenwood plug. You got your antenna adapter there, the steering wheel control adapter. I'm going to show you how to program those. We do have our GPS and our two USBs and our microphone ready to go into the back of the unit. I'm really going to show you here because they all correspond pretty easily. For example, GPS goes into the one that's labeled GPS. Okay. They all plug in. Uh, relatively to what they say they would. So here's the microphone we ran. It runs into the one that says microphone. A bit hard to see there, but it actually says mic. Now, this one here, remote in. Be aware, that one is your steering wheel control adapter, okay? That's the only real one that people get confused with that I've found. Um, it plugs in like that, right next to the microphone. Um, I'm gonna pull that out, make it a little bit neater. Okay, we're gonna make this really neat with two, um, two hands. But these are your cameras if you want to run dash camera, front camera, reverse camera. Otherwise, you can leave it in the rear vision mirror at the top. Um, but we've already wired that. You've got your two USBs here, color corresponding, and you've got your main power plug at the back here. So we're going to plug all those in, push it in, program the steering controls, put the bolts back in, and show you how it works. Guys, there's the unit back in, and this is the first startup screen. So a couple of things, just straight up camera. If you do want to turn the reverse camera on, you do have to turn on reverse camera interrupt. Just tap that one and turn that one on. Um, you do have guidelines in this that you can actually set up as well. We don't have the reverse camera on this, but I'm going to show you that the reverse camera signal works for if you did run the reverse camera. I mean, this one, like I said, is up in the top screen. Um, and that's the main setup that you're going to have to do. You can change some of the um, display settings and stuff like that. But we're just going to turn demo off as well because that's just for demo features to display the unit. And we're going to turn automatic remove this warning after 10 seconds, which is just a warning about safe driving and not using the unit while driving. So, unit's done. Now the next step is we're gonna program the steering wheel controls. From this screen, guys, you're gonna hit menu, setup, user interface, steering remote control. It's gonna come up with this. Couple of seconds, you'll get this learning complete button will light up. And all you're gonna do is actually tells you on here what to do, but you're just gonna press the steering wheel controls with the corresponding button. Press that for two seconds on the up for the volume, and you're gonna map it to whatever function you want, okay? So we're gonna do volume up for that one. That's done. Volume down, press and hold, volume down. You can map these to whatever you want. There's gonna be track up, track down, and then there's a mode button. So we're gonna go track up, track down. Now you can map these, like I said, to the voice uh, guidance on the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or whatever you like. You don't have to actually stick to any of these things. Um, for mode, we're gonna make source, learning complete. Okay, so that's done, guys. Um, you can test that out. Do your steering wheel controls. So if we went to radio, um, you can see here we're going up on the steering wheel control. You can hear the volume going up and down. Test that out up and down on the steering wheel. We'll change the track. You can see me doing that there. So, testing the radio is actually working. We can actually see it works. It's great. Um, press and hold to save radio stations. And then you would press our mode. You can run through all the different modes there, wireless mirroring, things like that. But, Guys, that's done the VSS, the reverse signal, um, everything that you need to do. You test the reverse camera if you wanted to right here. You have to have your ignition on and put it in reverse to test that. Now, all we're going to do is put the bolts up, make sure these three cables are sitting out so you can plug your main unit back in, and away you go. And that is it, guys. Very easy to do for the FJ Cruiser. I apologize for the single-handed uh, filming, but I hope that makes life easier for you guys out there. Check out our website, Carbon Car Systems, if you need any of this gear. We do have non-marring pry bars for removing your dash now, um, the tester tape. And uh, look, give us a su subscribe, or a subscribe even, on our YouTube channel. It helps us out making these videos for you guys, but it makes life easy. That's the Kenwood DDX 919WS. Um, there was last year's model, the 918, 917, 916. They will all work in this car. 919 is the latest unit, just came out this year in Australia, available all, all over Australasia from Kenwood. All right, guys, so there you go. I've actually plugged that in through the factory USB. We're using wired Apple CarPlay at the moment. Like I said, it does have wireless CarPlay. You do have to set that up in the settings if you want to set that up. I can't do that while I'm filming on this iPhone, but we can use the client's uh, phone and we will set that up. It is in the settings under 
uh, user interface um, back where we did the steering controls you can actually do it in there um, Apple CarPlay is very, very quick on these units. You can see here, you've got Apple Maps, Waze Navigation, Google Maps, a few different things. Now, one of the cool things about these units is they're a flip down CD DVD. You can adjust the screen. So you can push this eject button and actually change the angle of the display. Because it is lower in the dash, you can angle it up however you like because there is CD DVD actually behind the unit. But that makes one of the cool features of this unit. It does have HDMI inputs if you want to use those as well. Um, but you can make those adjustments and line it up nice and neat in the dash. So this one here, I'm going to quickly pop it out a little bit because it looks a little bit uh, crooked. I'm just going to undo the bolts and we're going to lower this left side and raise that a little bit just to be a bit of a perfectionist. Um, but you can actually change the viewing angle of all these, um, make it a little bit brighter. So you can see just adjusting the brightness there and set it up how you like. Very simple, easy to do, guys.